Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you a cool way that you can add a Google Directions form like this to your website for free. What I like about this trick is that you don't need to custom build a Google map or mess around with any other Google API limits or anything like that. This is just using an HTML form. We recently had a client who wanted to add this functionality to the website, so after doing some research, I came across this GitHub. So this is where I got some of the code to create this effect. The way it works is you add a simple HTML form to your website and the values that you plug in here will automatically get redirected to a Google map and display the driving directions on the new page. In this example, I just wanted to get simple directions from Tampa to Orlando. So when you click that button, it will come up with this right here. So this automatically will redirect and plug in these values up here in the URL. So that's where all the magic is happening is it automatically is plugging these values into a URL that can then be displayed on a Google map. Now the good news is that this is just a regular HTML form, so you can use this on any website. In this example, I will be using Elementor as the main builder to add this HTML code, but I'll also show you a really quick example on how you can add this code to the default HTML block within WordPress, just so you can kind of see how it works. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you three different ways we're gonna do it. We're gonna have it where the user can type in the from and the to, then I'm going to have it where the user cannot type in the to address. It's just where they can add the from address. And then down here is the most complicated one, which isn't too bad, but you can enter in the from, the to, and then you're going to be able to select which mode you want for transportation. So you can do public transit, driving, walking, or biking. So in this example, these up here will automatically just default to this recommended travel mode. Whereas this drop down menu right here, you're going to be able to force it. So when the user types it in, you can have it go to one of these tabs instead. So let's just jump right into the tutorial. And here we are on the back end of an Elementor page. And as you can see right here, I have this code already in here. So this is just using the regular HTML widget. So you just drop that in there and then you can just copy and paste these codes right here. And I'm going to have all of this HTML code in the description below. Now I'll just quickly go through how this HTML code works and then do some testing. This first line right here is the form action. And so what this does is when a user hits this button right here, play it now, it needs to go somewhere. So in this case, we have action equals www.google.com slash maps. So what that's gonna do is after the user will submit this form, it needs to redirect to that URL. So that's what it does. It goes to google.com slash maps. And then what these two input labels do right here is whatever we put in here, it needs to be added to this uh, URL parameter. Um, so basically what that means is when a user types in something here, I'm gonna do, um, was it Tampa to Orlando? When you do this, if you keep an eye up here in the URL and see how it changes. So you could see right here, I'm gonna copy that because it automatically is gonna start to switch over. So this is what that HTML form creates is this right here, google.com slash maps, and then it adds in these two values right here. First one is your start address and then your to address. So you can see right here, ADDR equals Tampa, and then what is it, DADDR equals Orlando. These are called URL parameters, and this is what is feeding the URL so Google knows what it is that the user typed in on the previous page. And you can see right here, it automatically populated the to and the from right here inside the Google Maps. So it automatically will add in Tampa and Orlando. And if for some case the user types in a value and it doesn't recognize it, it will say that right here. So it will give the user the ability to correct it. And you can see with this first form, it goes to the recommended travel mode. So Google is going to just try to figure out what is the best mode to get from a destination like Tampa to Orlando. And in that case, it would just be driving and you can see it automatically will add the map right here. And so if you need to change a few values in here, it's really simple. Um, if you wanna change where it says from and to, that's what this placeholder is. You're gonna to wanna to keep the type as text. You don't wanna change that. And if you need an ID for some reason, you can put that in right here. And then this right here, this label is just for accessibility. So you just wanna keep that in there. And then this right here is a very simple, just to input type equals submit. And then if you don't want that button to say plan now, you would change that right here. So it's very lightweight. I stripped away a lot of the code that was in the GitHub. And so I got it down to just the five lines of code. 
So that's how you do that type of uh, driving directions where the user can enter in the from and the to. Next, we're gonna go into this example right here. And the difference between this one and this one down here is we're not giving the uh, user the ability to type in the to address. So if you have a website where you want to have it where users can get directions to your business or whatever it may be, this could be a good example right here where you, the user does not have the ability to change the to. But they just put in their starting destination, hit plan now, and then it will redirect to the same type of map. So let me show you exactly how that works on the front end. So let's type in um, uh, Maniunk, which is a part of Philadelphia. It's a few miles outside of the main center city of Philly. So I wanted to just type in Maniunk. So I'm going to hit plan now. It's going to, you can see right here, it's about eight miles away from the middle of Philadelphia. So let's say our business was in the middle of Philadelphia, like at City Hall area. That's what the um, to address was by default. And now if the user is coming from, let's say, this area up here, it automatically would always redirect them to the center city or wherever your business may be. So you can see that right here is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So if you go into that form right here, it's very similar. We just have a few different values in here. And you can see right here, the very first one is the same. The second line is the same. The from is the same as the very first example up here. Um, the two, there's only two different things that are a little bit different. Instead of type equals text, we type in type equals hidden. So that hides that field completely. And then the value equals Philadelphia PA. So this will be where you put in your business address or wherever you want this form to always redirect to. So in this case, we had Philadelphia PA. So that's what this value is right here. It automatically plugs it in. So let's go back and hit submit again on that and you can see what the form looks like. So if I hit plan now, you can see I'm going to copy this real quick. It's going to change. So let's just wait for that to reload. So you can see this is what that form did. It went to google.com slash maps. The starting address was the one I entered in Maniunk. And then it did the two is to Philadelphia plus PA. So it automatically adds this in the URL. So that could be a really good use case if you know you want your users to always go to one destination. This could be a really good example right here. And in the more complicated example right here, we can give the user the ability to type in the from address, the to, and then what type of mode of transportation they want to choose. So let's go ahead and do a test right now and show you how this works. So let's say we want to go from Tampa to Orlando. And let's say instead of public transit, let's do walking. That's a long walk, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to type in here. Let me copy that. So you can see Tampa, Orlando, it automatically defaulted to this tab right here called walking. And you can see it'll take you 31 hours and it's 94 miles to walk. But if you have a case where you want users to have different ways to get to your destinations, this is going to be a really good use case. This code right here is very similar to the very first one we added right here. The only thing we did different was add this drop down menu right here. So let me show you how that works. So the first tab is the same. The second tab is the same right here. So this right here is your select mode right here. So this is the only thing that's different between this one and the very top one. You need to make sure that this code is in there correctly or it's not going to work. So it's called select name equals uh, direction FLG. I'm not sure what that means, but this is what makes it work inside Google. You need to have that in there because this is what the URL looks like. And if you look right here at the end, it adds that parameter called uh, DIRFLG equals W, which is walk. So you can see right here, you need to have the different options. So for each one of these, we have public transit, driving, walking, biking. These all need to have a specific value. And that's what these are right here. So public transit needs to have a value of R underneath this option. Driving is D, walking is W, and biking is B. So these are all values that are very unique to uh, Google. So if you mess up any of these right here, it won't work correctly. So what I recommend doing is making sure you just copy and paste this code in there and don't change any of these values right here, but you could change the name of these things right here. So if you don't want to say driving or if you want to add driving directions or uh, how to get here to walk, you know, you could change these uh, values right here, but you cannot change this or this is not going to work correctly. So what I do recommend is going back and doing a few tests, you know, making sure that these things do work correctly. So let's say you wanted to bike instead. 
make sure that biking works and you can see it automatically will go to that tab right there called cycling and it shows you how to do that. And like I said in the beginning of this video, you can add this HTML code to pretty much any website. So here we are in a situation where we're just using the default WordPress builder or Gutenberg. And I just have a very simple page right here. And you can see that this right here is just the regular uh, custom HTML block. So I just went here, typed in HTML, and I just dropped that code in there as well. So you can see it's the same code as before. And when you preview this on the front end, um, this is how it's gonna look. You will need to go ahead with some CSS and style this stuff out if you want it to look a little bit better. But it will function exactly the same way. So let me get rid of this code right here. And let's do a test uh, again from Tampa to Orlando. And when you hit plan now, it should go and do the same exact thing. So yeah, it's the same as if we were doing it inside Element or any other page builder. So that's what I love about this approach is it's just a regular HTML code and you can see it was only five lines of code to get this thing to work. So like I said, you can add this to any CMS, any page builder, Gutenberg, anything that can take HTML, you can add this code in there and it's gonna function correctly. And one last thing before we leave in this tutorial is if you want these forms to pop up in a new window, you can just add this little code right here. So underneath the form action, we need to have target underscore blank so if we update that, let's do a test. And so now when the user clicks plan now, it will open up in a new tab. And let's do the same test. Let's do Tampa to Orlando. You click this button right now, and now it's gonna open up in a new tab rather than you know on the same page. So that's a good situation where if you want the user to have this map on a totally different tab, just add that little bit of code and you'll be good to go. And that's it for this Google Maps tutorial. Let me know if you're able to add this to your website and leave a link in the description below. I'd love to check out how you guys were able to implement this onto your website. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.